Well, welcome to Inside the Birds TV with Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan. ITB TV is powered by DraftKings, the number one rated sportsbook app. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook and Casino app right now and start playing online casino games. And when you do, make sure you use promo code ITB to get your bonuses. Well, I got to say, 2020 just seems to get worse by the hour. Mm. Uh, This is somewhat, Adam, of an emergency ITB as we are here to talk about Brandon Brooks and the Achilles injury that he suffered uh, today, Monday, and uh, confirmed through uh, Twitter and his Twitter account. Now, there's a lot of layers to this, Adam. We're going to go through each and every one, but I can't get past the fact that just last week, Adam, we did an ITB podcast entitled Depth Concerns at Key Positions. We talked about the offensive line, the lack of veteran backups, and what would happen if somebody get injured, and here we are less than you know two weeks later and an injury has now happened a major injury yeah and and jeff uh let's talk before we get to the depth issue with brandon brooks now this is three major injuries Mm -hmm. he's rehabbing his dislocated shoulder Uh, rehab was going great as i understand it uh definitely would be ready for training camp uh unfortunately now with this new injury uh, two years ago, and actually technically three seasons ago, was the playoff game against New Orleans in 2018. He tore the, the other Achilles. Two years later, he tears the other Achilles. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is 30. He turns 31 in August. Uh, you know, typically an Achilles, six to nine month rehab. I guess there's a there's an outside chance that he rehabs it great, and by some miracle, he's available in the playoffs. Again, I'm giving the best case scenario. The, the normal scenario is he's not going to come back no matter what this season, even with the playoffs. But because right. of his ability to, to come back and re- – he's a great rehabber, unfortunately. He's had too much uh, experience rehabbing these injuries. But he does seem to come back in a, a good amount of time. But for the purposes of the fans and, and the show, uh, forget it. And you just – he rehabs it. You just assume that he won't be able to play this season. If by some miracle, he's back in the playoffs great. So then let's, right. let's let's push this forward. Yeah, next man up. Yeah, who is it? Right. You talked about the depth issue. We did. We did. Uh, was that an that was that actually was an, an actual show which you could get on uh, YouTube or on our a pod version where mm-hmm. you discussed the the, the uh, depth issues and and the reason why I wanted to do that show, Jeff, was when I started examine examining the uh, the roster, I'm like, wait a minute, where, where are the veterans here? I get I get they want to get younger. You're supposed to do that, but if something happens, where are you going here? Well. The worst case scenario happened at guard. Brooks is unavailable. What are their choices? Well, Matt Pryor did fill in for him against the Giants. He finished that week 17 game when uh, Brandon suffered that dislocated shoulder. He did start his only game in his career against uh, the Seattle Seahawks in the first playoff game. They did lose that game, but at least Pryor did start a game. But when you look at their their backups, okay, Nate Herbig is, 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 is now a center. Uh, he is definitely not ready to play to start a game. Jordan Mailata has never played guard. It's not a consideration. Jack Driscoll is a rookie who's never had a practice. Jariga has actually got a lot of upside, but he's an undrafted free agent. Uh, Opeta is only a guard, I'm told. Render is is not ready to go to start a game. Uh, so, so Jeff, uh, their options are prior a trade or sign a guy on the street. Well, I almost think, Adam, that the options aren't just one. I think that they are going to have to sign yeah. a veteran off the street and then have that veteran compete with Matt Pryor, who I f- suppose will be the leader in the clubhouse to start at right guard. Yep. I think in a best-case scenario, and this is really hard to imagine because we're talking about no camps and, and grass time during the spring, exactly. but you hope that Jack Driscoll is a very quick study, much like Jason Kelsey was several years ago who was able to claim that center spot right away. Maybe he's good enough to be able to start. I don't know, but really that's your, your options right now. The one name that people are going to throw out there because he got released and he's a pretty good player is Larry Warford. Yeah, Warford. Larry Larry Warford, here, here's the book on him for personal socials. He's a power blocker. Uh, he is not the guy you want to look at if you're going to probably be a passing team like the Eagles. Unless, unless it's a situation, as one person explained to me, if you need him for one season, he's a really good blocker for the run, not so good against the pass, you know, for the pass, and you just you just live with it. 
look, there's a reason why the Saints cut him, okay, folks? He's, he, they thought he was at the end of the line. By the way, the Lions didn't want him back years ago. And obviously, he revived his career with the Saints. But you're, he's an older player. Uh, Ronald Leary is also out there. The Broncos declined his option. He did work with Rich Scangarello last season, who was the Broncos OC. Uh, so Scra- Scangarello coached him. He'll be able to give the Eagles a scouting report. Other than that, the names that I have are Josh Klein, who was released. Uh, the Vikings had expressed some interest in bringing him back uh, but early in free agency, but not lately. So he's out there. Mike Person, who started in the Super Bowl, Jeff, who could play center and guard, he was released by the 49ers, who's, who's been with the Rams and the Colts. He's a journeyman. John Jerry's below average. He, he's a backup. Oh, God, yeah. 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 Kevin Pamphiles, uh, who's got – He's not a bad bad backup guard, but you don't want him starting. And Ted Larson started a bunch of games. He's a center guard, a veteran, journeyman type. That's it. So to me, the best the best choices would be Larry Warford. You kind of know what he is at this point. Ronald Leary, Josh Klein, Mike Person. That's pretty much it. Or if, if it's in-house, there's only one consideration, and that's Matt Pryor. Yeah, and you know Matt Pryor has had somewhat of an inconsistent career. Um, they liked him a lot two years ago when he was a a rookie and he made the team and he was looking good. Last year, there were some you know he had an up and down camp, um, up and down play during the season. Obviously, this is year three. We we've talked too much almost about well, it's hard to make that jump when you're a young player when you can't get on the field because of COVID. So that's going to be an issue. I think what they have to do, Adam, is two things. One, I think that, and I'm sure what they'll do, wind up doing is have their pro guys, their pro scouts, start to look at tape of Larry Warford just over the next, you know, 24, 48 hours to get a, a really good idea of what they got. And I think you're right. I think that they're going to compare that to what they think they already have in prior to see if it's worth paying the money to bring in Warford, who's still going to make a decent, decent salary wherever he signs, I would think. Or do you just sign a veteran, one of those guys you just mentioned, who's not as accomplished as Larry Wofford, and say, that's for depth, and now we just go ahead with um, Matt Pryor, and maybe we get lucky, and either Jack Driscoll or Jordan Maialata can adjust to that position. The one thing I don't know... It won't be Maialata. No chance he plays guard. You can, you can you don't think so? Off. No. no. Okay. Yeah. What about the idea, and I don't know why you would do it, but we, we should exhaust all options. There's no reason to move, say, Amalu to right guard and try to find a different left left guard? Would there be? Oh. I um, can't see if that would be a benefit yeah, to them and, or not. Yeah, and remember, uh, we've talked about Jeff Statland does not like to do that. Uh, to, now, obviously, right. doing the offseason rather than the in-season, but the problem is without an off-season, Jeff, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's hard to do something like that. Um, you know, Jordan Mailata, you just want him. You, you don't want him. He's never played in an NFL game. Uh, right. he, his future is their swing tackle. Hopefully, you know, down the road, um, you know, you figure he's, he competes at one position. Having him take snaps at guard, it, I talked to them last year. They said it was not a consideration. Uh, I, I, mm. And I was pr- it was pretty – the person I spoke to was pretty strong about it, and this person would know uh, okay. because he's so super athletic. Um, right. I, I don't he see be a it. Tackle, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I, I just don't see it. it. It would be a complete reversal of their their thought process. But listen, they're in a situation now where they don't have a lot of choices. Now, Larry Warford's a little bit younger than I thought. He turns just twenty nine. When I say just, he turns twenty nine later this month. That that's not old. But again, he's he's a. You have to kind of understand what a guy is and and isn't. He's a terrific run blocker. He, he's not he's not a great athletic guard. He, he's strong player. Mm-hmm. I know he's been a pro bowler before, no question about it. But there's a reason why now he's on his, he'll be on his third team. Mm-hmm. When the Lions did want him back years ago, that was shocking. Like it, it was. I, was. I remember that. Yeah, right. So uh, they and don't have a lot have of to think, You have to think he benefited a little bit in playing in front of Drew Brees. It was a very quick uh, release of the ball. He's going to get – Drew gets it out very fast, and that helps the linemen up front. They don't have to hold their blocks as long. So that that's helped him. He'd – come into this situation and this is why I say the Eagles I think their pro scouts really have to watch the tape and see because Carson Wentz is a completely different type of quarterback and Carson right. as we know likes to hold on to the ball a little bit likes to push the ball down the field likes to use his feet to to navigate the pocket and see if he can hold on so if Warford Good point. is yeah. has really fallen off if they t- t- detect a really big drop off in pass protection 
again, then then they probably look at Matt Pryor and say, he's been here. He knows our system. We, we have to hope we can coach him up. Yeah, yeah. So explain to me on Warford, that's his pass blocking is not his forte. I mean, he's just a better run blocker. Uh, right. And again, I mean, he, he turns 29. Why? I, and I get the Saints want to get younger, but man, get, getting rid of a guy who's, who's been a multi pro bowler guy, player, that that that's you know it doesn't it doesn't sound good that they that they got rid of him. So uh, he's out there. Ronald Leary, who's a, a former Dallas Cowboy and Bronco guard, uh, those mm. are the top guys. Now Brandon Brooks. Okay, so we need to talk about this. This is important. Yeah, there's another layer of this. Yeah, that we need to get yeah. Into. And I knew this is. I, I I don't say I knew he was going to get hurt, but I knew mm-hmm. one of these contracts that they redid. I knew at some point, the reason why we did a show, folks, I think we did it in May. We did a contract show. We I did. said to you, I said, Jeff, they got a real problem for 2021, way worse than I thought. Um, they got a lot of decisions to make, and uh, they did a very unique contract. They've done very few of these. Uh, most teams don't do what were called advanced guarantees, but they did. I'd, I'd put it on our show on that show, and I reconfirmed it on a Monday night. And what he was when uh, Brooks was on the Eagles roster March 20th, his 2021 base salary became fully guaranteed. Uh, so that 10.4 million, Jeff, is fully guaranteed now for 2021. Right, stop. I want to repeat that. Yeah. That's really big because yeah. he's was on the ro- this year's roster yes. on March what? What 20th. day was it? Third and day of the course, league year, 20th. And, and of yeah. course he was going to be. There's no reason to get rid of, of course, him. But because of, of that, because of a restructure, right? He is now. Well, they fully extended him. Yeah, they extended it. Yeah. Right. It's extension though. Yes. But the extension was was recent, almost like last year. Yeah, right? at the end of last season. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. in in, in uh, November of, of last season. So right. So now he's one, going to carry a yeah. very large cap. You said how much guaranteed? Ten point what? Yeah, ten point four million is fully guaranteed for twenty twenty one. So remember what All I right. said on that show is that uh, they can move on after twenty twenty one. Now, if they want to, if they decide to cut him after twenty twenty, they can do it. They could use the post June one designation for twenty twenty one. But yeah. and then you know you 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 break still up the money. cap hit. Yeah. It is, yeah. You're still going to take a lot of dead money. Um, so you could just you could just basically you have it over two seasons, but it's not ideal. Uh, Brandon, here's the thing about Brandon Brooks: the why the reason why they did it, Jeff. You're talking about a phenomenal football player uh, mm-hmm. in the prime of his career, just dominant. But he did have two serious injuries. Now, this last injury happened obviously after they they did the renegotiation so you can't blame him for that but this advanced guarantee they just don't do these things i was surprised that they did this but um but again they're taking these long-term bets that the guy will be there um they don't have see the thing that helps brandon here with his contract you know it's not like they have anyone who's ready to step in for for him for 2021 unless jack driscoll a fourth round pick is ready in 2021 that guy's not on the roster so uh, well, by all I think they hope that he is. I think they hope it's Jack Driscoll. We'll see. Uh, maybe, maybe. Although I, I, my sense is Driscoll, just talking to some people around the league I, I trust, mm-hmm. fits in better as a six offensive lineman, uh, a center, a backup center, guard, right tackle. He's definitely not a left tackle. But mm. um, he's a fourth-round pick. You can't expect him to start. But That's you never true. know. The Eagles the Eagles do, have done such a good job of developing these, these linemen. I, I wouldn't rule anything out, especially with Jeff Stoutland, who – when he when he puts his his you know stamp of approval on a player, uh, the guy usually gets the job done. So that the the contract is is obviously something they're just gonna have to deal with. Um, th- that's it. I mean, there's really no one else they could go go with here, Jeff. That so yeah. let's look at their linemen now, okay? Well, real quick because I, I I want to hammer yeah. this down as much as possible. Yeah. Next month, August nineteenth, I believe he turns thirty one years yeah. old. Yeah. Okay, yeah. he's probably going to miss this year. So that yeah. means next year at this time, he's going to be 32 years old going into the 2021 season. Correct. And on the books for at least 10.4 yep. million guaranteed. Yep. So yep. probably uncuttable. That's going to be coming off his second Achilles. Now, is it the same? No, foot? it's it's the same okay. one. It's different. I'm sorry. It's different. It's the other one. It's the other right. foot. Yeah. So I guess that's better than having like the Jason Peters. He had it on the same Same Achilles injury. Yeah, when he re injured it, he he retore it. Yeah, Yeah, it's crazy. But not everybody is Jason Peters. Brandon Brooks is a tremendous guy, uh, tremendous football player. It's a shame. Uh, This is one of Howie Rosen's best signees in in 2016. One of the best during his, and he had control. It's the first time Howie had full control in his career, and he he got that one right. He just had terrible luck. So let's talk about what their line looks like, left to right. Right now, Andre Dillard's your left tackle. 
They've left mm-hmm. the door open for Jason Peters to return. Uh, we're going to have an update on that very, very soon on our show. Isaac St. Miles is their left guard. Kelsey, for this season, is their center, for sure. There's, there's no doubt about that. Jason's going year to year. Brooks is out. Right guard is open. Right now, it's Matt Pryor, unless they trade or sign somebody. And, of mm-hmm. course, the great Lane Johnson's the right tackle. So, you know, Jeff, they've got a lot of questions, man. What, right guard's a question mark. Left tackle's yeah. a question mark. This is not kind of what we were thinking, but it is what it is. No, and, you know, it's kind of a byproduct of what we've talked about with this this offensive line. It's been very good for several years now, but it's also getting older. Yeah. And, you know, Jason Kelsey himself is going to be – he's pondered retirement each year for the last few years. I think he's now um, 32, and he's going to be 33 during the season, if I'm not mistaken, November. So he's a guy who's getting a little bit older. We've, yeah, you're right. You're correct. Yeah, we've, we've credited them for drafting offensive linemen, and that's a, a great thing. But right now, as you sit here, you have to be a little bit concerned about the state of the offensive line. Jeff, the they right side. Yeah, yeah, Jeff, the right side. Lane Johnson is now 30. Brooks turns 32 when he probably mm-hmm. plays next NFL game. Kelsey turns 33 in November. That now, yes, they've got Pryor, who they like. Jack Driscoll now. Uh, right. Jordan Mylotta, they're hopeful because he's so been this this phenomenon. This uh, this training camp superstar, but he's never playing in a regular season NFL game. So they've got a lot of questions for a team that I could tell you, they're so excited about the, the speed they've added on offense. But when you don't have one of the best players at his position in Brandon Brooks, that hurts. Yeah, that, that hurts. Yeah. yeah it, it's uh it's a problem. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Before we get out of here, Adam, I think we've addressed every level of looking at this team really quickly because it's, it's, it's a topic we can't not address. I mean, We've read the, the headlines. We know Ezekiel Elliott has tested positive for COVID. Yeah, other Cowboys yeah. have. Other Texans have. The University of Houston tried to have some practices. It had to shut down because guys tested positive for COVID. I, it's really uh, – the NFL is, has all these protocols. They're, they, they've taken their precautions. Very and, proactive. And, you, know, yeah. you know, Jim Harbaugh came out – or John Harbaugh, I should say. I'm sorry. He came out and said, you know, some of this is not humanly possible. Whether it is or not can be debated, but – I don't think we can sit here today and be definitive that this is going to work. I think the NFL I mean the protocols. I mean the protocols. Yeah, that, they're, yeah, they're, that everything's going to work out right. They're yeah. they're they're being very proactive. I'll give the league credit for that, but definitely everything they've done at this point has worked in terms of the off season program. You're talking about free agency. People didn't want them to have it. They had it. It worked well. Thank God they right. had it. The draft. draft worked they well. did it. Yep, yeah, they did it. The GMs were at home. I've talked to a bunch of personnel guys. It worked out, okay? But that is, again, they're not around people. In training camp, in your building, you got to be around people. You could social distance all you want, but the fact of the matter is people are going to be together. They're just, there's only so much you can do, and I, I applaud the NFL for uh, taking as many precautions as possible. Um, a lot is up in the air here, though. I mean, yeah, they're going, they're, they're going for it as if the season will start on time and training camps will start on time. Uh, they've got the NFL PA and, and NFL talking to each other, seeing if they need to move the training camps up to give the players a little bit of an acclimation period. We'll see if that happens. But yeah. the fact of the matter is the coaches that I've spoken to over the last week are very concerned with the challenges here. They they do understand what the NFL is doing here. They're not, they're not mad at the NFL. They're just they're right. wondering, as you just brought up, as John Harbaugh brought up, how are you going to get through this and combine safety but being practical and real here? that's right. the challenge here so uh that's what we're dealing with here and we'll, we'll learn more over the next three to four weeks information will come out every week about what the league is thinking i'm going to talk to more coaches and executives uh mm-hmm. we'll update that but uh one thing before we get out of here though I, I, you got if you have not listened to our giants or redskins shows with greg cosell you gotta listen to them an absolute education we appreciate all the great comments we got a lot with jeff i learned so much uh from J- greg's tape study uh He's uh, pretty incredible, and I, we we really applaud him for his work. And uh, make sure you check it, check those pods out because you're going to learn a lot. And by the way, next up, the Cowboys and the Eagles on ITB. Can't wait for that. Yeah, it's going to be a fun week of doing podcasts with Greg Cosell. You're right because they're so insightful. More X's and O's, not the stuff that you normally, you know, you, you know. It's the, it's the really inside the game that Greg that we get with Greg Cosell. So look forward to doing that. Uh, also, make sure you're looking at ITInsideTheBirds.com. Andrew DeCecco has also been doing an NFC East outlook himself and has some really interesting stuff on some of those younger players who are on the rise for every team. 
So that will do it for this edition of Inside the Birds TV. Uh, I want to thank Hunter Brody, our producer. You can find his work on his YouTube channel, Sports Talk with Broads. Catch the latest Inside the Birds podcast, uh, as Adam was talking about, on any podcast platform you use. Check out InsideTheBirds.com. And thanks for watching. You can catch us uh, again on the next episode of Inside the Birds TV.